we have to have a knowledge of God's word before we can appropriate it. Otherwise, it's just like shooting in the dark. You're aiming all over the place and hitting nothing. It's a lack of the knowledge of God's word, which is primarily responsible for people, good, sincere, honest people, to go through 10, 20, 30, 40 years of their life and still not really know where they're headed because they lack the knowledge of the word. This man was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He had the knowledge of the word. He knew that Christ was coming. He did not know that he was coming just then. He had not known this five years before or six months before even. But believing God's word, he saw the signs of the times and he looked for the coming. Hundreds of others had looked before also, but he had not come at that time. But you see, every man who believes God's word is always looking for that which God's word says is going to occur. Like to those of us who belong to the church, born again of God's spirit, it says we are looking for his return, waiting for his return. We're looking for it. Could occur tonight, could occur tomorrow, next week. I don't know, but we're looking. So Simeon was in the temple on this 41st day when Mary and Joseph, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to the temple to present him unto the Lord for redemption according to the law. And the Holy Spirit was on him. Verse 26. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost. It was revealed unto him. Isn't that wonderful? There are three revelation manifestations in the Bible. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. As there are three manifestations to be utilized in, among a believer or in a believer's meeting, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy, so there are three manifestations of revelation. Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and discerning of spirits. Word of knowledge tells you the score. Word of wisdom tells you what to do about it. It was revealed unto him, revealed, revelation, revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's what? Boy, that's something, isn't it? What a comfort, what a comfort there is in the manifestations of revelation. How God revealed to this man Simeon that he would not see death until he had first seen the Lord's Christ. Boy, with that kind of revelation, that man could really walk because if he got the mumps, they couldn't kill him. If he got the measles, wouldn't kill him. If he had arthritis or rheumatism or cancer or anything else, it couldn't kill him. Nor was there a bullet made that could shoot him or kill him or a knife that cut his throat. Why? Because the revelation said that he would not see death until he had first seen the Lord's Christ. Boy, that must have been something, wouldn't it? To know this. But remember, he was a devout man waiting for the consolation of Israel. Verse 27 says, And he came by the Spirit into the temple. How did he come to the temple? Did he go to a Ouija board? Is that what you call them, or a wheezy board? Did he, did he go to some spiritualist meeting? Did he have his palm read? Nope. Didn't have to. He had a better connection than that devil spirit stuff. He had the Holy Spirit on him. And by the Holy Spirit it was revealed unto him that he would not see death until he had first seen the Lord's Christ. Furthermore, the Spirit said unto him, the Spirit, the Spirit. It, he came by the Spirit into the temple. 
He didn't guess. He didn't work it out from the stars. Didn't get it from a Ouija board or a spiritualist seance. He got it directly from the Lord. He came by the Spirit. Verse 26 says, It was what unto him? Revealed that he wouldn't see death till he'd seen the Lord's Christ. Then, when the Lord's Christ came, it was revealed to him by the Spirit. And he was told to go to the temple. Simeon wasn't in the temple all the time waiting for the Lord. What a bunch of baloney that is. You know, sometimes people get religion, or they think they get religion. And then they think they have to sit around all the time waiting for the Lord to come back. Good gravy. He's coming anyways. You can look for it without sitting around all the time. You can be doing something and be on the move. You don't have to be in church all the time or sitting in the front pew saying amen, glory, hallelujah, or something else. You don't have to be on your knees praying all the time. No, 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 no. If you're born again of God's Spirit, filled with the power, and you know the Word, and you're walking in the Word, you're constantly walking in the light as He is the light. And then revelation can be given. The Lord had told him he'd see Christ. Then when it got time, he said to him by the Spirit, Simeon, get over there to the temple, boy. Get moving. And I want to tell you something. Simeon stayed home for another two weeks thinking about it, huh? He rationalized and he said, well, it can't quite be true. No, 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 no. When the Spirit, when it was revealed to him by the Spirit, he came to the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then, verse 28, took he him up in his arms, and he blessed God and said, Lord, verse 29, Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Class, ask yourself the question. How did he know that this particular boy was the consolation of Israel. Again, by revelation, there were other children being dedicated at the same time. How would you like to walk into a place where there'd be 20 or 30 gathered at the same time and just by hit and miss pick out and say, well, that is the child. You might miss 24 times out of 25. He walked by the Spirit. By the Spirit, he went in the temple. And when they brought this child in, God said to him, that's the child. Then God told him something else, which ordinarily was not done by a man like Simeon. God said to him, pick up that child. Pick him up. Because in verse 28, it said, he took him up in his arms. He did it. And he did all of this by revelation. By the way, this little phrase in here is still the theological phrase which is used many times when people bring their children in the Episcopal Church and some other churches so that they are dedicated to the Lord. The minister takes the child in his arms. They get it from this verse. You getting cold in here? Well, we'll turn the air conditioning down a little. These are tremendous truths in God's Word that uh, uh, really are a blessing to the hearts and lives of people who understand the greatness of the operation of the Holy Spirit. And you understand what goes on in, in our country sometimes, the culture in which we live, and so forth. Now in verse 31... For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, verse 30. Mine eyes, he said, I have seen this Lord's Christ. And the word had promised him he wouldn't see death until after he had seen the Lord's Christ. When he had seen, when he had seen him, he said, now I've seen it. I've seen it. 
Therefore, Lord, I'm ready to go. <laughs> but then comes a word of prophecy. And prophecy will always exhort and comfort. It edifies those who hear. It edifies, it builds them up by exhorting them and comforting them. I want you to see these truths in the following verses. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. That's something. Prepared before all the people, all of them. Jesus Christ came into the world to bring good to everybody, to bring salvation, to bring light, to bring life to everybody. A light to lighten the Gentiles and he was to be the glory of the people Israel. Verse 33. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Why did they marvel? They marveled because they hadn't talked to Simeon. Simeon had not discussed this child with them. But that Simeon should from his mouth utter these tremendous truths is what really astounded them. And Simon, verse 34, and Simeon rather, blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel for a sign which shall be spoken against. That's something. The child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel. 